Okay, we're here with Trey, Andrew Jackson's house. Now, uh, Andrew Jackson's house is over here, but they do have uh, a winery here at the Hermitage and a restaurant. So if you wanted to sit down and eat and have a drink, you can right over here. So you can literally come up here and hang out and get drunk and eat some food and hang out at Andrew Jackson's house. Jackson's walking cane. Now, Andrew Jackson was one of these presidents that assassination attempt did try to happen. And a guy walked up to Andrew Jackson, pulled out a gun, shot at him, and it didn't fire. And Andrew Jackson used his cane and beat the living crap out of him. They had, they had to drag Andrew Jackson off of this guy because he was beating him with that cane right there. That's how awesome that cane is. That beat up a... Uh, uh, assassination attempt on a president. And his dueling pistols, Andrew Jackson, he was a dueling president in over a hundred duels. Well, this was found on the battlefield in New Orleans, right here in the War of 1812. It was carried by a British officer, <laughs> a dead British officer. Cavalry sword. Here, I was gonna record okay. you while you're talking. About. Okay, this. Wait, wait, wait. You're Andrew, going the other way. You're going that. Okay, no, no, no. You're Andrew, right. you're Andrew right. Jackson's eagle headed sword. Now, let's go all the way down to the top of the eagle head right there. Oh my God. That's his actual eagle headed sword right there. This place is amazing, Trey. You see this? His top hat? What? Yeah. That's his, that's Andrew Jackson's hat. Can you believe that? Yeah. Man. Andrew Jackson's carriage, look how beautiful this thing is. That is something else. Wandering off and I've lost Trey now. 
tray somewhere around here, but we're actually going to go inside Andrew Jackson's house. You're not supposed to video or anything in there, but I'm going to. So we can find Trey. More than anybody that I've either a known or read about. Wow. And he does this throughout the house. So he has created the illusion of a Greek temple. Now, this is the third most visited presidential home in the United States. More than 80% of what is in this house belong to Andrew Jackson and his family. This is not one of those, well, when you go in, this is kind of sort of how we think it might have. No. You're going to see exactly what he saw when he walked through the doors in 1837, fresh from Washington. This is an 8,000 square foot time capsule, completely filled with his stuff. And for much of it, we had the receipts when he bought it. Like a time capsule. I even love the federal blue. Uh, I know I, it's, it's like that delt, the wedge where China blew it away. It's so pretty. I love the old world. I don't like this modern world. <laughs> I agree. Thank you very much, man. Hello there. Right. How are you? Cool. The tour guides have been amazing. Uh, really, you guys are just wonderful tour guides. So welcome to the upstairs. We are upstairs. Oh, I love that one. Is it? It's creepy. Oh, five. 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 Six. 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 So we don't know as much about the upstairs as we do the downstairs. We interpret these two rooms as the grandkids' rooms. The room over here we have set up for Jackson's eldest grandchild and only granddaughter, little Rachel Jackson. We have ribbons on the bed by the fireplace. We have two dolls, a little toy china set. Later on in her life, little Rachel becomes a member of the museum group that helps save the Hermitage. Wow, and, yeah, and she would provide them with important information about life at the Hermitage during Jackson's retirement years as well as years after his death. She would always live close by. Mm. She passed away in 1923. Mm. On the opposite side of the hallway is the grandson's room. This is where Andrew Jackson III and Samuel would have stayed. Next to the Sherwood Cradle in that room, we have the cup and ball. And by the fireplace, there's a set of dominoes. Both of these rooms are in what's called their summer dress. So the bed hangs are mosquito netting. So that way during the summer, you can open the windows, keep bugs away. In the back right corner, there's a complete wash stand and wash set. On top, there's a pitcher and basin for washing up. Down on the floor, there's a slop jar for dirty wash water. And to the left of that, it's a one-handled chamber pot for indoor bathroom use. Jackson did add indoor plumbing into what's the White House, but never into his own home. If you want to follow me, into the rest of the upstairs. Y'all, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Restoration of the home in the 1990s, we got a chance to replace that missing paper. 
We went on a worldwide search looking for this wallpaper. Wow. The Louvre Art Museum in Paris got us in touch with a family who had this exact paper hanging in a summer home in the French Alps. Wow. wow. We bought the paper, sent a team of conservators over to France to remove from the walls, and we re hung it in this room. Oh, that's that is insane. What an incredible museum. That's such preservation you're doing. Much respect for the team here. Yeah. Really, I mean. Well, it's, and this would be before my. You're going to do it, you do it right. Yeah. Look at them here style, I love that. And this paper's only the match itself was made in 1818. So in this upstairs space functions a lot like the entry hall downstairs. You can open these two doors to create a breezeway to serve the sitting space in the summer months. The door on the back side of the home is called a jib door. So the top lets in as much natural light as a window. The bottom works like a regular door. And the top and bottom can be opened separately. So I say the name of the store again. Jib, J I B. Jib door. God, oh, remember that. Thank you. You wouldn't mind stepping onto that carpet for me. Sorry. Oh, so sorry. No I'm worries. So sorry. Thank. No yeah, worries. Thanks for catching me. Sorry. No worries. No, I feel terrible. Thank no, it's you. okay. So these four large closets, uh, they were sort of general household items and linens. Uh, Jackson time closets are still so, so quite rare. People should have as much stuff back yeah. then because they're a little more likely to find. Velvet's cabin is. It's just beyond the white fence that comes here. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see it has a look. Oh, no pictures inside the house. Oh, yeah. So, and then you'll see it just as a look for him later on in his life. So, this one uh, is not original to the house. It's an exact it's similar to the one in the wall. Well, it's the exact, it's a, it's a copy. It's the exact copy of the one downstairs. Uh, we added it in this chandelier to allow for a light source for okay. downstairs. Beautiful. Any other quick questions for us in the outside? So beautiful. I don't think The French influence is so strong. Yeah, uh, this, so you have this Dufour company. Is that the name here? Is it so? Uh, this would be this would be a blue empire. So yeah, it's the style of most of this furniture. Yeah. Uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of it came from Philadelphia. Um, that's where uh, Sarah was from, and that's where wow. she had a shop in Jackson. So which room did the fire start in? Uh, it would have started in the rear parlor. Um, the, the parlor in this room shared a chimney. And the sparks from that flew up and then landed on the roof of time when the chimney Wow. And at that time, the rear parlor was the dining room. Tornadoes come through here? Uh, April 1998, we had a tornado come right through the property. Um, and this the house? Uh, yes, narrowly missed the house. Uh, did destroy 1,200 trees though. So, including most of the eastern red cedars on the. And those would have been like witness trees that would have been around when yes. he was around? Yep. Damn it. So there I love are those six trees. that we can definitively trace to Jackson's time. Wow, six on the property still? Yes, uh, there are four um, eastern red cedars on the line okay. on that hair drive and okay. two on the outside of the path. Okay. So four on the carriage drive. Yeah. yeah, four on the carriage drive on one side and two on the other. Okay, I'm gonna go hug one. <laughs> Thanks, man. That was awesome. Thank you guys for being so beautiful. Okay, that was the inside of Andrew Jackson's house. 
Now we're on the outside here. Absolutely. As all the ancient, as all of you, all the world had. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good point. Have you read about the slave trade? Nobody ever speaks about it. The forgotten slave trade. North Africans and, and Arabic peoples were going into Europe for right. hundreds of years and taking people. Exactly. Arkansas. We all share this. Right. Right. And that's what's forgotten. Yes, Place they don't tell that because they want to divide us. You're right. right. You got it. Yes, yes. man. But so we all love each other, don't we? You're we right. all love each other. There's no division. Nothing but love. It's disrespect. I want equality, but you must be an old liberal because the people who call themselves liberal today are the fascists. You're a real liberal. I want the white race. the real one. I want the white race to get its due respect. It's not going to happen now because liberalism. Liberalism has been co-opted. I know what you're talking about. You know, I just like hanging out here. That's why I come here. That's why I brought Trey here. I just like hanging out here. Um, hanging out at Jackson's house. What are you doing? Hanging out at Andrew Jackson's. Now, the magnolias right now are blooming all over this property. Magnolia is one of my favorite trees. So, I'm going to see if I can uh, get a flower and take it home to my wife. And over here is the, the smokehouse. I've seen this before. Uh, I would love to go in the basement. Seems like it's not too hard. Oh, yeah. Actually, it will be. Actually, that will be pretty bad. That, that, the Lord does all things for a reason. Um, Here's the smokehouse. So, um, now in here. But we're heading. This is where they would put bad. the meat, uh, hang it up there, somewhere. and these yeah. things would be a fire. Just smoke, smoke, smoke. Here's another big magnolia. Look at this thing. One of my favorite trees and flowers. I was trying to get that shot of that one green area and the kid caught me and I... Where it was on fire? No, no, it had... Okay, so those are Greek. So, he, okay, so all of this has a lot of Greek whoa, stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Let's take a step back. Here, okay. Look. What? Here, I'll get behind you. You see the, the moon upside down like that half? Yeah. Then the star and then the moon? Yeah. The different way on the side there? What the heck is that about? You know, uh, well, but you don't know that came with the original house. So a lot of people think, you know, so so the Greek imagery probably to him, John, probably meant that, um, you know, that's the way they viewed America. Like the, the new, the new Greece. Of, of philosophy and art and architecture. So that's probably how they viewed it. And, um, this sort of utopian concept is what he was probably trying to express on the walls with the walking. Yeah. Okay, so. Now, all throughout the, the Jackson Hermitage here, uh, Hermitage means the whole property, not just the house. Is you have these benches, you can just sit and chill. And right here we have where Jackson and his wife and his family, they're all buried. And uh, just so much history here. Uh, uh, you know, the, the founding fathers of America, the only president to take us out of the national debt and uh, was Andrew Jackson. And he fought the banks. Uh, uh, one of the only presidents to fight the banks. And pretty interesting, uh, you know, Trey was just telling me that, that President Trump, when he entered the White House, he brought in two paintings that he owned himself, Andrew Jackson, and put them up in the White House. And uh, you gotta see how Andrew Jackson fought the banks and how Trump was fighting everybody right now. Pretty interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm Petro, that's Trey. Uh, uh, this gentleman right here, uh, beginning of the tour, was amazing. 
I don't know who you are, but you're dressed amazing. <laughs> what what is that? She uh... is a lead interpreter, so she's part of our supervisory staff in our department. Oh wow! I'm the director. She's the lead interpreter. We have another lead interpreter, and then all of these others are our interpreters. So the dress is this? I match the mansion. Match, the time is this something? Of Jackson's yeah. retirement. Wow. Around the style of 1840. And I guess that hat was for shade. So you would think if this was a true sunbonnet, I'd also have a back curtain protecting my neck. neck. Yeah. So as plain as this is, it is a fashion bonnet. Some use, but not entirely. How, how is it wearing that right I have now? worn costuming for so long, period clothing as we call it, that it's my normal clothes. <laughs> but um, So I always, I always like, you know, the way people dress back in the day is far better than how we dress nowadays and but just like getting the everyday get up to do that every day just mm -hmm. seems like it took so much time it's and a different effort. mindset does it take um, so, way more time than um, putting so on the yoga the hair, pants the hair's the hair's the longest because I, I do the period hair pins oh, wow. and i braid and coil underneath my cap that and is all so that cool. but yeah I, I, <laughs> she's really doing it yeah. <laughs> so and it I is do. a reflection of and then also impacts how things are done, the way they're done, in terms of the period code. Mm. So that it is, it is a reflection of, but then helps to mold what activities, what society feels, uh, what the standard courtesies uh, are of the day. It's, you know, once you're in that, and there's not only wearing period attire, but wearing period attire correctly. Because I have seen, for instance, now this is another period, but when we get hot and we have button shirts, we unbutton them here. For instance, in a later period, in the period of the Civil War, you unbutton from the bottom and you always kept the top button buttoned. Mm. Is that like to catch the, the sweat or something? Well, that allows if you're wearing mm. something like a shell jacket, it comes in and just cools. Then uh, it becomes somewhat of a national, uh, natural air conditioning huh. in that you allow the air to blow through. You're still wearing the jacket. You're still in military form. Uh, during the Civil War, what happened here? The good news is virtually nothing of significance. Nothing. They left it alone. Uh, both the Union and the Confederacy claimed Jackson. Jackson uh, would not have been wanted to be claimed by the Confederacy because he was a Union. He was a Southerner, a slaveholder, and a Unionist. And uh, he had two grand grandsons who fought as officers in the Confederacy. He would not have approved, come right on through. Uh, but... Um, he was for the Union, so he would not have been. That's why Andrew Johnson, he was from Tennessee, and even though he was on that side, he was still for the Union, and that's why Lincoln chose him as the vice yes, president for the second term. Because he came from East Tennessee. During the Civil War, during the Civil War there were 120,000 soldiers from Tennessee. Wow. What they don't tell you is that 30,000 of them were for the Union, and that means they're either freed African Americans or they're whites primarily, with one notable exception, from East Tennessee. Because East Tennessee uh, was, had a disposition, they're small farmers, they're businesses. In Middle Tennessee, and even more so in West Tennessee, the plantation owners with lots of slaves, uh, who tended to control the political system and the, and the mountain people of East Tennessee and of Western North Carolina and of Western Virginia re, uh, resented it. We're not going to fight for slaves. We don't have any, or we have very few. Now, was that mostly because of the land? That they couldn't, they couldn't grow on that side. They could grow more over by Memphis, and that's why they had more fields, more slaves. But on the east side of Tennessee, just because of it was more mountainous, they couldn't have bigger farms where you'd have more slaves? For the most part, yes, but they also remembered. They, a, they didn't like anybody telling them what to do. The American when, when way. The British, when Ferguson <laughs> said uh, that he was going to come to the back country and he was going to incite the Indians to pillage and plunder farms. These people over here 
we just wanted to be left alone. But when the British said, we're going to do that, they said, basically, you and who else were coming for you. And huh. they did. And they're still trying to find yeah. Ferguson or what was left of him after they got through with him on King's Mountain. Because he didn't oh. get off that mountain. He's under a pile of rocks, what's left of it. But he, they came over from Virginia, from Kentucky, from Tennessee, from the Carolinas, and cleaned his clock. Wow. And then... They came back. They so what's your take on... You don't tell them what to do because they're going to show you they're not going to do it. They still are going to show you because the old joke in, the t joke in Tennessee now, well, it's not a joke. It's a truth. East Tennessee is heavily, heavily, with the exception of a, curb, a few urban districts, they're heavily Republican. And the only way that a Tennessee candidate is going to win statewide he has to come out of East Tennessee with a huge plurality. Wow. And we used to say, because that's a different time zone too. We'd look at seven o'clock, I mean, growing up. It's seven o'clock, polls in East Tennessee are closing. Let's see how they're doing. And if You know what, that's so race, interesting, the time zone. That's, uh -huh. that's interesting. The, the region and the time zone. But if you didn't, you could, you could say if every Republican and his uncle and his brother's dog voted and there was a huge majority in East Tennessee, you could say the Republicans have a shot of winning this statewide race. If it was neck and neck, it's kind of like, it uh, ain't happening because the Democrats will overtake them in the middle and the east. Now, some of that's changed. There are more Republicans statewide than there used to be. But, it, but literally in the 60s and the 70s and early 80s, if the Republicans running for U.S. Senator and Governor did not come out of East Tennessee with 30, 40, 50,000 vote majority, they didn't stand a Chinaman's chance, as the old saying was going. It wasn't going to happen for them, and the Democrats... That is win. so interesting. And it all goes back to the division that occurred philosophically and politically in the antebellum and early civil war. Because mm. at one time, there was a group, we would call them now uh, counter-terrorism. Or maybe we'd call them terrorists, I don't know. It, it, it depends on which side you're looking at it from. That, but there were folks in East Tennessee who were part of what came to be known as the Union League. They were Unionists. And at one point, they had in East Tennessee, you've got Knoxville, you've got up there in Bristol, Johnson City, you've got Chattanooga. They had burned bridges and they had, they had communications completely disrupted in East Tennessee so the Confederate authorities couldn't communicate. Because these were unionists and they're saying, we're not going to let the rich people who said we're out of the state, we love the old union, we had folks who fought for it, we're not going with them. And so you had that, and they're not going to tell us what to do. And they raised 30,000 Union troops wow. to fight against the Confederates, and the governor of Tennessee had to send occupation troops into their own portion of their own state to try to stop it. It's kind of like, yeah, but this is a Confederate state. Well, it is except East Tennessee. Now, there are some Confederates over in East Tennessee, but the majority were Union people who were not going to be told by slave owners and secessionists what they were and going to do. Well, Just a little bit like Ferguson telling them, you know, if Ferguson had shut up, he'd still been alive, and he would have, he could have won or had a good chance of winning the back country of the Carolinas. But when he said, we're going to incite the Indians and we're going to come clean your clock, then their response was, we'll see whose clock's going to be cleaned and who's going to do the cleaning. And they came over in droves, like I say, just wiped the forest. So I didn't know that, that Andrew Jackson had adopted a Native American. Oh, yeah. Is that before or after the, the Indian Removal Act? Well, Andrew Jackson had at one point or another, and, and Andrew Jackson's a complicated figure. 
And so you're going to have, um, there were actually three Native American children okay. that lived that lived with him for a time. Two were very, they were babies, and they were ill, and they did not survive. And they did not survive, but only one did. Uh, Lincoya lived to be about 15. He died of, uh, uh, he died of uh, tuberculosis. Oh, it wow. It was sweeping the area. He became sick. They tried to nurse him back to health. Okay, once again, Hermitage, Andrew Jackson, Petra, Trey's up here somewhere. I think we're done for the day.